How to intercept and redirect the output log with C++ in Unreal. I know it sounds a little bit weird, but I assure you it can be useful if you want to, let's say, write it in a text file or display it on screen. So let's get to it. But before we start, this video is going to reuse some things we saw in the video 44 of the series, which are the singleton and the delegate. So if you want more information about those, you can go back and watch that video. Otherwise, it's time to jump in the code. And here we are in a completely empty header file. And like the previous video, we're going to do a lot of back and forth between the header file and the CPP file. So that's why right here, I didn't create anything yet. We're going to build it together. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do is the includes as usual. So here in the header file, I'm going to need two new includes. I'm going to need the delegate combination.h to be able to create a delegate that we're going to use to dispatch all the message logs that we receive from the log. And to connect to the log, we're going to need an output device. So that's why right here, I also need to include the output device.h good so these are the two includes we're going to need in the header file and both of those are inside the core module so that's pretty good and we also need one more include in the cpp this time so back in the cpp right here i'm also going to add the core globals to be able to access the log of the editor so inside core globals we're going to have a variable containing the log of the editor and from there we'll be able to attach ourselves to receive the information as soon as it's available good so these are the three includes we're gonna need today. They are all inside the core module, which should already be inside the build.cs file, but let's just make sure that it's still there. Here we go, it's there. Make sure it's there, otherwise nothing's going to compile and actually nothing's going to compile. So add that one in there. Okay, we're done with the includes. So let's go back in the header file and in there we're gonna need to do a little bit more preparation before we are able to attach ourselves to the output log. And the preparation we're gonna do is first create a singleton that we're gonna use to host a delegate and that delegate we're gonna use it to receive the log from either blueprint or anywhere else you want to receive the log so if you want to receive it from c++ you can just attach yourself to the delegate you're going to receive the message same thing in blueprint and then you can do anything you want with the log you don't have to recreate the whole class and everything every time you want to receive the log from somewhere else we're just going to use a delegate and since we want the delegate to be available both in blueprint and c++ we cannot make the delegate static we have to create that delegate on top of an object and in this case we're going to have a singleton of that library that will Host that delegate. So let's create the singleton real quick. It's the same thing that we did in the previous video. So I'm going to go through that real quick. So here I'm going to create a static variable, which is of type of my function library right here. I named it redirect log singleton. And that singleton, we're going to set it inside the constructor and destructor. So when we create the library, we're going to set the singleton to be equal to that library we just created. And when the library is destroyed, we're going to reset the singleton back to null pointer. So the singleton variable, the constructor and destructor of the library, Library, and finally, a little get function that is blueprint pure, so accessible from blueprint to receive the singleton. So that's just a get to get access to that static singleton. So good, these are all the parts that we need to create the singleton. So let's jump in the CPP real quick just to define it. So in the CPP, I'm just going to define my singleton just like that. So here at the top, I need to reinitialize my singleton since it's a static variable right here. So redirect log singleton equal to null pointer by default. Then in the constructor, I'm going to set my redirect log singleton equal to this, which is the instance of the library that was just created. In the destructor, we're going to set it back to null pointer because the library isn't valid anymore, so the singleton isn't either. And finally, I have my get function right here that I'm simply returning the singleton. And now that we have the singleton, we can use it to host the delegate, but the delegate doesn't exist yet. So we have to go back in the header file and first create the delegate right here at the top. So declare dynamic multicast delegate three params. We're going to create a new delegate. The name of the delegate is going to be f on log message received and then it has three parameters and these three parameters are the same exact parameters that we receive when a new line is added in the output log so first we have the message that is going to be added in the output log obviously then the verbosity of the message and finally the log category of the message and if you don't know the log categories can be anything you want you can have the default log term categories or any user created log categories here we go so that's going to be the declaration of the delegate now we just have to create a variable of that type to be able to register ourselves to that callback and that's what we're going to do right here so at the bottom of our log library right here we're going to create a new variable of type f log message received and i'm going to call it on log message received and that's going to be the delegate we're going to use to attach ourselves to every new messages that is appearing in the output log and that variable is also blueprint assignable because we want to be able to attach ourselves both in c++ and in blueprint and to do that it needs to be blueprint assignable so good the delegate Delegate is now created, then actually we have all the pieces we need to start using the output log, except well, the output log itself. So 
To use the output log, we need to create ourselves an object of type output device, so a children of that class, and then we'll be able to tell the engine that this child now exists, and the engine is automatically going to feed all the lines of log inside that child. But to do that, well, we need to create our own child, and that's what we're going to do right here. So I create my own class right here, an f redirect log output device, and it's a child of f output device because that's a requirement. We need an output device to receive the log from the engine and inside that class we just have to override one function in the parent of this class we have the serialize function that function is called automatically by the engine as soon as a new line of log is created and we're going to use that function to receive the output message and then dispatch it to everything else that wants to receive it so the serialize function right here it receives the three parameters as you can see it's the same exact parameters that we already created in the delegate right here at the top so we have the message we have the verbosity and we have the category and we're simply going to override that function simply to call our new delegate and provide all the information inside it good so we have the new class right here we're going to create a new object of that class we're going to provide it to the engine but actually if we want to keep track of that object we will need to save it somewhere and right now we don't have any variable to host that object once we create it so i'm just going to create a new variable right here at the bottom of my function library right here it's just going to be a simple pointer of my new class the redirect output log device and we're just going to push the new object we just created inside that variable that we will be able to find it later if we need to. Okay, so that's it for the header file. We have a new class and a new object. And what we're going to do is create that new object, uh, feed it to the engine and tell it, hey, we have a new object that is interested to receive the log. That new object is going to receive the log using the serialize function. Inside that serialize function, we're going to call the callback to dispatch the information to everywhere else. And the blueprint will be able to hook itself to the callback using the singleton that we created at the beginning of the video. Here we go. So now we have all the pieces. Now it's just time to connect them together. So let's jump back in the CPP. And the first thing I'm going to add is the serialize function because it's missing right now. So good. I now have my serialize function and now the code should compile. Great. But it doesn't do anything quite yet. We need to create an object and then that object needs to call the serialize function. And it's actually not that difficult to do. So first in the constructor, we're going to create our little object right here. So when my function library is created, I'm going to also create a new f redirect log output device and put it inside the variable in my library. So I have my new variable right here. I have my new object I just created. And now I just have to tell the engine that this object exists. And that's what I'm going to do right here. So in the g log, I'm simply going to add a new output device so add output device providing it the redirect log output device which is the new object and that's it now the engine knows that the object exists and it's automatically going to call the serialize function great good and uh, now we just have to also destroy the object when we destroy the library so when the library is destructed i'm going to do the opposite of that so first we have to unregister the output device from the output log so remove output device so removing the same object we added at the beginning so now the log in knows that the object is not valid anymore. And then once it's removed, we can finally destroy the object safely. So delete the redirect log output device and then set the variable back to null pointer because the object doesn't exist anymore. So the variable needs to be reset back to null pointer. Here we go. So we create the object when the library is created. We destroy the object once the library is destroyed. And then that's it. The serialize function is going to be called automatically. And now we can use that serialize function to dispatch the information to everything that wants to receive it using our delegate. But before we can call the delegate, actually, there's a little difference between the three parameters that we receive here, right here as input versus the ones that are inside the delegate. In my delegate, everything is an F string. So the message is an F string, the verbosity is an F string, and the category is an F string string we can easily convert the teacher pointer and the f name to an f string that's not a problem but the verbosity that one we have to convert it manually and the reason why i have to convert it is because the e log verbosity type right here is not accessible to blueprint it's not a blueprint type we cannot dispatch that variable to blueprint it's just not going to work and that's why right here i'm simply converting it to a string so my blueprint still has access to the information it's just going to be in a different format so good another problem though there's no easy way to convert that enum to a string as 
as far as I know. If you know any easier way to convert it, please tell me. But in my case, what I'm going to do is simply create myself a new string right here, the verbosity string. And then I'm simply going to do a switch on my enum to set the value of my string using the different verbosities. So here I have my error, I have my warnings, and I have my log. Everything else is going to end up in default because there's a lot of other verbosities and I don't want to hard code them all right here. I'm just going to focus on the three main ones. Obviously, in your case, if you want to cover them all, you can simply add all the different verbosities in there. Good. So that's how I'm converting my verbosity to a string, and then that string can be used in Blueprint, obviously. And as I said, if you know any better way to convert an enum to a string, please let me know because this is not pretty at all. Anyway, now we have all three variables that are easily convertible to a string, so we can simply call our new event dispatcher right here. In my function library, there is my singleton, so I'm getting my singleton. On that singleton, we have the new event dispatcher or the new delegate. So unlog a message receive, and then we can broadcast that delegate providing the message that we receive as input, the verbosity string, and finally the category converted to a string. And now everything that is attached to that delegate, the unlog message received, is going to receive that log information and can do anything it wants with it. So good, now it's time to jump in Unreal, attach ourselves to it in Blueprint and see if it works. And here I am in Unreal, and today we don't need anything in the level or anything anywhere because we're just going to take a look at the output log and we're also going to use a user interface that I have right here. In there I don't have that much, I just have two buttons, one to bind ourselves to that new event dispatcher we created in C++ and one to unbind ourselves from the same event dispatcher. So when we click on that button we're going to attach ourselves to the log and when we click on this one we're going to detach ourselves from the log. Super simple. In the graph it looks a little bit more complicated though but it's still fairly simple if you look at it. I'm simply getting my singleton. When I click on the bind button, I'm getting the singleton and attaching myself to the callback we created. So the unlog message receive, it's going to call this event right there. And when we click on the unbind button, we're going to do the opposite. So we're getting the singleton again, but this time we're unbinding ourselves from the event unlog message receive, and that's going to obviously unbind this event right there. I'm also clearing my log and I'm refreshing the user interface when I do that, just to prove that everything works and I don't receive any new output lines after that. So good, this is the binding, this is the unbinding. Once the event dispatcher is called in C++, it's going to call this function right here. And in that function, what I'm going to do is format my text a little bit. So I'm going to add the verbosity at the beginning, then I'm going to add the category, and finally I'm going to append the message at the end. And I'm going to store all those log messages inside a little variable that I have right here. And then I'm going to add those log messages inside the user interface right here with a little end of line character at the end of every line so every message is on a new line as it should be. Good. The only weird thing is the delay that I have right here. And the reason behind that is because the delegate in C++ is called on the thread that is used by the log. And that thread, the log thread or whatever thread it is, cannot be used by the user interface. It's just how it works. The engine doesn't allow you to use that thread to refresh the user interface. So what that means is here the little set text is going to cause a crash in the engine. If the delay is not there, obviously, it's going to cause a crash in the engine because we're trying to refresh the user interface at the same time as the log is generated and that's not allowed. So here I'm just adding a little delay just to switch thread. It's not the cleanest way to do it, obviously, but it works and it's good enough for today. And the reason it works is simply because the completed pin right here is going to be called on the proper thread. It's not going to be called on the log thread because right now we're back inside the user interface and inside the user interface it's going to call the completed and that's going to refresh the user interface on the right thread. So good, that's the blueprint. Now it's time to see if it works. So I'm going to run my editor utility widget right here. If I type anything in the log right now, nothing happens in the user interface, obviously, because I'm not attached to the log quite yet. But if I bind myself to the log now, I should be able to type something in the log and see it appear in the user interface. So hey, all the lines that are right in the output log also appears in the user interface. Well, that's pretty cool. And just to see if the unbind also works, I'm going to unbind myself. And now if I type something else in the output log, here we go, I type a few lines, nothing appears in the user interface because obviously I'm detached from the output log. Good. So I'm going to reattach myself to the output log, clear my log just to make it more obvious if I add the new things in the output log and in there. And then I'm going to do maybe add a new actor in the level. Here we go. So now I have a new bunch of lines 
lines inside my user interface and they are also inside the output log actually it's vice versa the output log is there and then they are redirected inside my user interface so that's pretty cool i can add a point light and it does the same thing i have a few things in there i can add trigger every go i have a bunch of lines that all the same lines that are appearing in the output log right here i can still continue typing stuff in the output log if i want to but it doesn't really matter i can maybe resize the size of my viewport and this should also appear right here here we go the size of my viewport is also displayed in my user interface and you can see all the different log type at the beginning so log 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 default and then you have the log category so the log actor factory the cmd the log viewport and then you have the output message obviously so good now you know how to intercept the output log and do whatever you want with it you can write it in the user interface you can write it in the game you can write it in a text file you can upload it to a server you can do anything you want but that's gonna be it for today's video so i'm gonna see you in the next one bye bye